Reservoir Dogs, Woo! Quentin Tarantino's debut feature film. Not initially well received, but it has since become recognized as one of the most seminal independent films ever made. Starring Harvey Keitel, Steve Buscemi, and Tim Roth, Tarantino shot this film in just 35 days with a modest budget of $1.5 million, and yet still revolutionized cinema's approach to dialogue, violence, and narrative. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Mate Night Podcast, where we are ranking every film ever made. Hi there, Dave. Today, we're diving into this low-budget gem. We'll be debating its rightful score amongst the greats, exploring Tarantino's position between inspiration and plagiarism, and uncovering some of the most intriguing production stories. So strap in, strap on, yeah, you and let's it. kick things off with our rating round. Woo! Fred, how do we score a film like Reservoir Dogs when we have only nine minutes to agree starting now? Go. Starting now. Um, Reservoir Dogs. A truly great film, both thoroughly enjoyable and groundbreaking, as you mentioned. Now, at first glance, the plot may seem a touch generic, centering on a diamond heist gone tragically wrong. But Quentin Tarantino infuses it with enough quirks, enough quirks, to elevate the story to something memorable. The non-chronological structure, which you alluded to there, beautifully, by the way, paired with seminal dialogue and stand-up performances, particularly, in my opinion, from Steve Buscemi and Michael Madsen, keeps you hooked from start to finish. Another hallmark worth mentioning is the inclusion of harrowing, violent set pieces, something Tarantino would later become famous for. However, it's worth noting that this level of violence won't appeal to everyone. I like it. Yeah. This film's shoestring budget leaves an indelible charm, making the most of every scene. That said, the mise-en-scene is at times carried by the exceptional writing rather than the visuals. Uh, a couple of performances, in my opinion, again, feel a bit jarring. For me, Tim Roth's portrayal, funnily enough. I know most people quite really? like it, but I just find him a bit weaselly, and I don't think his accent hits sticks the landing um, and of course quentin tarantino himself who is a bad actor the luckily, great tarantino l- luckily he's in a bit of a smaller role in this one overall reservoir dogs has a veneer of imperfection that while charming places it just a smidge below tarantino's best works still it remains a quality debut and one that has undeniably left its mark on cinema history. I'd give it a score of 8.53. 8.53, okay. 8 is great. <clears throat> I like it. Okay, mm-hmm. right. Well, <clears throat> here's what I'm thinking. Go on, hit me. If you're enjoying this video, you should like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah, and Beautiful. if you have anything to input, please let us know in the comments. <laughs> Beautiful. <clears throat> I also think that I can draw a hard line under 8. Yep. Uh, the reason being, any film that breaks this much new ground, uh, especially in such a successful way, immediately deserves a higher score. Mm-hmm. Um, and just to give you an idea of all the different areas, the dialogue was unusual, uh, the level and the presentation of violence, yep. uh, the nonlinear narrative, the patient but decisive music selection. This is just Tarantino. He's just He knows what he needs from mm-hmm. his music. Um, and the plethora of references to culture, pop culture, which like... Really, this film was the first to really oh, just yeah. bring all this stuff in together. So uh, some other things that really helped. I don't really like nonlinear narratives, as you know, usually. Mm-hmm. But this nailed it. And I love this nonlinear narrative because it's clear. It makes it dynamic and interesting. It's very, very exciting. Mm-hmm. The characters, they feel real to me. Um, and this comes partly from the dialogue, partly from Mr. Pink being there saying the whole time, we should get... the." We should get out of here. Yeah. But you not, need but those not characters. Doing it. <laughs> um, again, dialogue, magnificent. Great mm-hmm. quote. I just thought I'd bring one for an example. If you shoot that man, you die next. Repeat. If you shoot that man, you die next. Nice. Oh, love that. Um, so, yeah, not below an eight for me. Uh, sure. What's wrong with it? Why not give it a 10? <clears throat> what could we take away from it? Okay. I had a very hard time answering this question. Okay, all right. Um, Some imperfections, like visually, it wasn't a 10 out of 10. Mr. White uh, doesn't point out a very important and obvious fact. There's a a detail in the production where somebody dies, even though nobody is uh, aiming anything at them. They Mm. decide to keep it in the final thing because he liked it, but it's just a detail I didn't like. Tarantino and Lawrence Tierney's performances were not great. Um, So these guys do knock it down. Uh, my gut says something like 8.5 to 8.7, which would put it on our cinephiles around The Silence of the Lambs, Apocalypse Now, and the, and Psycho. But I can't figure out 
what is wrong with it and why it can't be above a nine. So mm. I was hoping maybe you could help shed some some ideas on why what's wrong with this film. Okay. Great points. We uh, we covered a lot of same ground. An area that you pointed out that I hadn't mentioned, which is a phenomenal boon, feather in its cap, is the sound score, yes. soundtrack quality. And, you know, we want to really be clear how this, like, the ripple effect of Reservoir Dogs and later Pulp Fiction in terms of the ability for, you know, just shooting the shit dialogue in movies, like, copycatted across the board for the whole the whole 90s was trying to recreate the magic that he was able to put into his his dialogue his writing um so what marked it down for me so i did mention a couple of bits I'm, I'm not a big fan of tim roth and he he's a really i'm sorry i like tim roth i don't like him in this i think his accent doesn't work mm -hmm. and the way he portrays mr orange as a very kind of conniving -y, weaselly just pain in the arse sort of character. I, I, gonna, I, I can't believe she killed me. She killed me. Nah, it didn't, doesn't do it for me. I think okay, that okay. you... I, I was always surprised at his inclusion. From the first moment when he's like, hey, I, I want my dollar back. And he's trying like a New York accent. Like, Tim, calm down. Okay. Um, obviously, Tarantino himself. The So I mentioned, and you mentioned as well, visually, that's where he really... Yes. made strides in the following films. He had a, yes. he had an absolute shoestring budget and you know, it does mean that it's basically driven by dialogue. And then the other thing is the generic nature of the plot. So the kind of heist, oh. we'll speak about the, the Do you reckon? from my perspective, heist gone wrong and the way that it, where it leads to. Yeah. I think, Considering how innovative he goes on to be later in a setting which is like not just multiple narratives, but multiple different stories within one. Yep. And that really is an it, elevation. It's not a Shyamalan idea. It's not like, no. where the hell did he come up with this? No. In fact, as we, as you mentioned, we will be going into exactly where he came up with this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we are running out of time. We've only got a minute left. You said 8.57. We passed 8.53. 8.53. We well, we're well here because we're right, we're right on the money. What did you yes. say? 8.5 to 8.7. I said 8.5 to 8.7. It would put it with Silence of the Lambs, Apocalypse Now, and Psycho, and I feel quite comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. Um i still not convinced by... I, I don't know the accents thing myself personally. Like, sure. I don't hear it as, as clearly as you do. So, obviously, it, it seems like that's quite an important thing. If you took that away, mm -hmm. what would the score be? How much of an impact has that had on your final score? Um, well, what have I looked at? Per my personal enjoyment of this film marks it down a tiny bit. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, yeah. That's, that's one yeah, element. Just like, not by... Yeah, okay. Like, it, it you know kind of dr not that it drags a bit but I, I i think that my enjoyment has been taken down a notch by the fact that it's it's been so overplayed like yes. that style unfortunately because he broke such new ground but i tried to take that into account um performances yeah i didn't think that good the characters yes some of them are excellent but some are just completely not fleshed out mm -hmm. um dialogue's obviously great and then visually it does work and it has a charm but also it, it feels like really low budget to the yes. point of you are 100% being carried by oh that's me okay so i think being carried i think by the dialogue i think uh i'm going to campaign for 8.60 8.6 what may night has rated and you have heard the exact reasons why perfectly articulated as always mm. that reservoir dog deserves an 8.6 out of 10 overall in the scoring which would put it neatly between The Silence of the Lambs and Apocalypse Now would make it the seventh greatest film of all time. Until further notice. Thanks so much for listening, everyone. See you on the next one. Cheers.